Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope that you're feeling really wonderful today. I wanted to come on and make a mid-month retrograde transit video update for you guys. Um, I am currently uh, not putting out a super huge amount of content, but this is one that I wanted to sit down and make and just enjoy a nice stream of consciousness dialogue with some charts about the current situation with all these retrogrades that we're having. We're about to have more. Um, we're going to break that down in this video. The chart should already be on the screen. And um, I thought that it was going to be good to come on and make this video because I haven't talked just specifically about retrogrades in a while. I've made some individual planet retrograde videos, but it's been a decent amount of time. So I wanted to do a similar video that I did actually a few years ago, which was called Things Not To Do In A Quintuple Retrograde Season. I'll link that video below and in the top right hand corner because that video just has some sort of fun, almost humorous ideas about, you know, things that maybe we shouldn't go for when there's such a huge amount of retrogrades. And actually, by September, we're going to be having six retrogrades, so it's going to be septuple retrograde, not just quintuple. So uh, gearing up to have six retrograde planets, it is just sort of the larger phase that we're in. Uh, all of these outer planets uh, usually do go retrograde once a year. Uh, we're not dealing with inner planet retrogrades during this time, thank goodness. If we had like a Mercury retrograde going on right now, um, or Venus or Mars retrograde, that would certainly uh, take this to another level. But it's all outer planet retrogrades right now, at least. Um, so what does that mean, having all of the outer planets retrograde or, or preparing to go into a time in September where uh, we have all the outer planets retrograde? Basically, it means that there is a reverting back to previous um, norms for some people. So in a very mundane way, that can look like reintroducing previous structures of your own life. So things that you used to do, jobs that you used to have, um, pursuits that used to be a big part of your life can come back in at this time. Um, and I'll tell you guys more about timelines in the description box below. I'll even list like what day each planet is going retrograde when they go direct. And I'll put all the information below um, so you can have that as a, maybe a reference or reading point as we're doing the video. Um, but yes, in the timeline where all of these outer planets are retrograde, I kind of don't think that anybody can avoid the reintroduction of previous structures, okay? And of course they have a very new tone because there's a lot of Aquarius energy and um, this year cycle is about the uh, introduction of new. So honestly, it's conflict because of the need for new experiences while also having to reintroduce old ones and it can kind of compromise as well. So maybe you're uh, working the same job that you used to work in a new place. So the content is very similar, but the location is different. Um, also, it can indicate at a more broad macrocosmic level um, just an unknown momentum, all of these retrograde planets. I always find that when, and this has been happening every summer for a few years now, but I especially found this in 2019 and very similar here in 2021, that there's a feeling of, um, you know, not being able to predict, not being able to exactly know the way that things are about to go. And that is perhaps even more intense now than it was then. I will say you can look back to like July and August of 2019 and September even of 2019 to get a little bit of a reference point, though the placements are so different at this point in time that it's going to have a different tone. But the overarching theme might be very similar. What I would also say is that we have to start to be able to embrace the unknown or we have to, in order to thrive with all these retrogrades, uh, be able to have confidence in the fact that things are unknown. And this has been a huge spiritual lesson for me over the last seven or eight months, actually. Um, and I've been thinking about this almost every day, about how the unknown can actually be something that is very supportive I suppose like the archetype of the unknown or the inability to predict, the inability to, in a stable and secure way, have a direct knowledge of what is oncoming. That is something that we might have gotten very accustomed to 
over the year cycle of 2020, actually. And maybe it was more mundane and in our personal lives, but the Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn that we had then was very conducive to creating predictable circumstances or very conducive to knowing well, in this period of time, I know I'm just going to be doing this. Like, I accept that in this period of time that there's going to just kind of be a certain uh, routine that is gridlocked. And now that's not the case, though I think that all these retrogrades indicate that we might kind of be striving for that again. Like, we just want these uh, gridlocked routines or gridlocked predictable things so that we don't feel threatened in what we're taking on because the unknown for a lot of people is very threatening. It's because it can go either way, you know? We don't know if it's gonna play out in our favor or not. We don't know what other people are thinking. We don't know how other people have changed who we perhaps are thinking of in a way as if we know what they think. Like I think So the collective consciousness is a big point of view always with outer planet activity. Um, and if you've noticed, like the collective consciousness is really evolving, like people are more empathetic. Typically in, in 2021, people are more, I'm not going to say aware of what others are thinking, but there's a more easy capability to put oneself in the shoes of another person now than say like 1980. Okay. Like it's very, like, uh, it's very different now how we contemplate when it comes to, considering other people's thoughts about what we do or even matters of reputation. Uh, reputation is not exactly it, but the it's the closest word. Uh, the, it's not reputation in the sense of status. It's reputation in the sense of like what other people think of my projection and how that impacts me. So reputation is the closest thing I can say, but it's not like reputation in the sense of like, I have this position and I have this reputation because of it. It's, it's not that two dimensional. Um, what, where I'm going with this is that, um, interestingly, we, our empathy might be a little bit off right now with all these retrogrades, especially, you know, seeing Neptune and Uranus getting there and, um, seeing Pluto obviously retrograde too. I would be aware of relying too much on empathy or relying on another person to be empathetic towards your cause or relying on other people to understand where you're coming from, it doesn't feel like that is a great area of safety right now, um, which might be perhaps a letdown to some people to know that, you know, people that they relied on to understand their position don't. Because what this time ultimately is doing is it's forging a different relationship with the empathy of others, or it's forging a different relationship with how we discipline our own process of measuring situations. So that's a little bit long-winded, but what that means is when we go to plan or strategize or take something on, and then within that process, how we consider the presence of other people within that, that is something that's so nebulous and difficult to work with. It's better to just get into action honestly at this time and to just allow yourself to reintroduce what I recommend for everybody with these retrogrades. And we're having these obviously until October and November um, before it really starts clearing up. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about timelines. And again, that's below in the description box. Um, September is the brunt of it. Okay. And then even in by later September, it's like fading away. But as we're going through the brunt of this brunt of this in later August and early September, as I feel this time is so vital, just in the way that we're breathing and in the way that our lives are breathing, not just our our respiration, but the way that things which have maybe not been able to air out in our own lives are just like forced into the open at this point in time. What I'm seeing is that um, not to cause us too much unthoughtful action, but it's not so good to get tied into the minute details that much right now. Like, what is like my... Um, clothing size like what is like the like what is my appearance in a very minute way like through hairstyles these things are very good to pursue right now but not good to like make bigger than they are either i'm seeing a lot of people with these retrogrades getting hung up or caught this is really the brunt of this psychic message regardless of how that channels or manifests in one's life like people getting really hung up and snagged on these details and then the moral of the story is bypassing them 
So with these retrogrades, we need to actually open it up a little bit and just allow some of these things to transpire or allow some of these bigger changes that I will say we do not want to stand in the way of too much um, to transpire because they have to, or they have to be some type of clearing purging process for the greater, uh, I don't know, energetic spectrum. There's, there is a feeling of purging uh, the energetic spectrum and to a degree, the entire latter half of the 2020 year cycle and then first half of 2021 dealt with some type of purge or some type of cathartic mm, clearing of energy. And that has already climaxed, I think. And this retrograde period at the end of August and moving into September deals more with um, slowly distancing oneself. So that's a really, really great way to channel this energy, actually. Almost like Six of Swords in the tarot, slowly distancing oneself from the previous pain. This is not about clean breaks here. This is not about snapping things off. It may channel that way for some people if they've been putting it off and putting it off and preventing certain changes from happening. It can kind of snap like that. But things that you feel are problematic in your life, people that you feel are problematic in your life, habits that you feel are problematic, the greatest way to channel this energy now is to slowly start to distance oneself away. It's not so much a cold turkey feeling. It's more like over this next month or month and a half even, for some people two months, the boat slowly sails away and it is gone, okay? And it distant, it fades in the distance. There's a feeling of the previous experience just fading into the distance. And I think this is actually a very healing construct for a lot of people where it needed to be this way, okay? where it didn't need to just disappear or it didn't need to just go away, but it kind of fades into the distance. Um, what would that be in your life? If you had to think about anything right now, like what would I like to kind of distance myself from right now? Knowing that I don't just have to break this off, knowing that I don't just have to go wild. Like how can I experience this fading process? Uh, for some people that's getting really creative as well. It's not so, you know, uh, location oriented. It's more like a series or pattern of feeling becoming distanced from. So like distancing myself from constantly uh, repeating previous difficult things in my mind, like distancing myself from nine of swords mentality. Like I see it coming on. I maybe still go through that sometimes, but slowly I'm distancing myself from that. And then by October or November of 2021, it's almost like a transformation has happened for a lot of people. And I'm going to talk more about that here in a second, but um, that's just good to reiterate is that a larger transformation is in the works, but it needs distance. It needs some type of time period. It needs some type of interim uh, limbo period almost in order for it to not up into a lot of our lives. So uh, kind of just some stream of consciousness talk. Um, what else do I want to talk about here um, about just the retrogrades in this period of time? Um, yes, yeah, something super positive, actually, that I will say that makes me feel very confident and really kind of intrigued, actually. I'm, it's a very potent psychic download. It's like we're getting so accustomed to having these mass retrogrades uh, as they have been cyclic since probably like, uh, I don't know, 2017-ish, uh, the way that it's cropping up in this time of the year um, with these other um, interplanet transits that are yearly to have these retrogrades at the same time. Um, we're getting used to this. So there's going to be something about this time of the year that we're able to actually, uh, dare I say, capitalize on, uh, that we're actually able to gain value from a difficult experience or gain value from the knowledge or wisdom that we are um, receiving through having gone through this so many times. So what that looks like in practice to me is now being able to pick and choose what we do and don't want to reintroduce in our lives. Like having in essence learned the lessons, like knowing, okay, that particular hairstyle I had back then really gained me a lot of uh, 
ground or something and I just enjoyed having it and I love the way that it looked on me and now I'm going to go back for that hairstyle or you know I saw that when I was uh, doing that sport that I actually had purpose in my life and I loved that sport so much and I'm going to start doing that sport again um back when I was doing that exercise or health regimen my body felt the best it's ever felt and I'm going to start doing that again and it feels very healthy it feels very deliberate it feels very well-being oriented instead of just losing control of what we're reintroducing like oh my gosh i've accidentally reintroduced an addiction oh my god i've accidentally reintroduced you know a fast food addiction or oh my god i've accidentally reintroduced a negative coping mechanism or something just because i'm out of control like like that's how these types of mass retrogrades usually affect people like they kind of just lose control and and just what comes comes in and that's going to be the case for some people but it feels that here in 2021 it, we're getting so accustomed to this that it's like now we're getting a little bit more expert in what is needed to reintroduce and what is not. And this is how like real self-empowerment happens when you know what has worked for you before and you choose that. And then you also allow the universe to meet you halfway with new things. And, and you basically have this great little um, very essential repertoire of life experiences with which you have a guarantee of life loving okay and that gives you kind of this area to also experiment with new new shades like um there's almost something a psychic image that i'm seeing is someone experimenting with um new colors new shades like this could be like makeup this could be clothing but that's just the psychic image and to me i interpret that as someone really enjoying the process of uh, trying out new things or trying out um, tones of life that they haven't tried before. So that's really a vital thing of this time. And especially by October and November, I'm actually feeling that that might be difficult for people to access like right when this video is going up. But how can you get yourself there? You know, because as I said, and I'll go ahead and talk about this now, October, uh, already so many of these retrogrades have cleared up. And we basically start, uh, things start going direct and direct and direct. It, it'll all be below. Um, and building up to a February of 2022 where we're in all planets direct at long last. It's been such a long time. We will have actually gone a very, very long time um, without having um, any all planets direct. That something has been retrograde for so much of this year. So... Um, I just want to reiterate, and I'm probably going to be saying this a lot, guys. I hope that I don't sound like a broken record, but I just want it to not be something that we ever forget about on this channel, that February of 2022 is a godsend period of time, and it's important to almost be working with it now. It's important to almost know that it's coming now. If there's any huge leap of faith that needs to happen, any huge drastic self-transformation or leap or pivot um, that hasn't already happened, but that you keep maybe stockpiling preparation for in your heart and your solar plexus, whatever. Um, it's really important to utilize February 2022 to every need that you can there. Okay. It's almost hard for me to find words about it because I feel it so strongly. Um, now it's August of 2021. It's almost September of 2021, guys. Okay. That gives us October, September, October, November, December, January, February. That's six months. I mean, when I say February of 2022, I feel like that's still like a year away or something. Like it's coming really quick. And we got to kind of understand the sort of overtones of our soul essence. That sounds very extreme. Um, but it's true. Like the soul that we are, that we have the deepest part of our being, some of this stuff to a degree is not timely for this period of time because it's hard to reach so deep. But if we already know it, as many people here on this channel, you know, this is not like a you know, very uh, surface level like gossip channel or something. This is, we, we're always talking about deep stuff here. So I'm sure pretty much everyone here has really been asking these questions for a long time, are starting to get an understanding um, to what degree we can of what we're here for, or at least we've been contemplating that. And um, even if it's not controllable, or even if you know that by like February 2022, I don't anticipate any huge changes, it's just important to know that there's, I'm not even going to call it a portal. I'm not even going to call it a gateway. It's more like a drop-off point where 
I don't know, it's almost like skydiving. It's almost like being dropped down to exactly where you need to be. And that to me sounds like descending, but it's not like a descending. Like for a lot of people, it's like uh, vibrationally elevating, though what is currently carrying us or what we're currently moving with is going to basically push us out to where exactly we need to be. So in essence, it's like the end of the bridge and the what is on the other side of the bridge for a lot of people. And it is also um, the ground that they needed to walk on, okay? What that means to me is kind of like X marks the spot. There's something about that period of time where we are perhaps discovering treasure or at least starting to really craft the best representations of ourselves. So lots of talk about February 2022, but it's actually connecting to this retrograde point right here and now because actually around the time of like September like 9th and 10th, um, that's the deepest point of the retrograde of all these retrogrades, six retrograde planets, okay? You know, of course, that's um, gonna be Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and Chiron, yeah? And that's going to be like our furthest point of introspection for some people. Uh, the last sort of point beneath the horizon that they need to be pursuing and then I will say by like November, okay, it's like day after day, progress after progress, step after step. It's like things, it's like the, the, the speed starts very slow. And then by February, 2022, we're moving very quickly. And we're like right at that point where we need to be. And it's like something really has to... For some people come into existence and then for other people also something has to leave the experience as well um, and there needs to be a very wholesome center point of development that is not i want to say subject to a scrutiny it's so pure it's so you it's so clear it's like what you're known for like i don't know this is just all a stream of consciousness but um it's important to know it's like a sort of climax pinnacle point of um who i actually want to be amongst people and stuff like that like to a degree reputation to a degree projections to a degree stuff like that though it's kind of like the merging of that with the uh deepest inner self uh, where there's not such a huge separation but i will say i see some people also uh, forging new identities some people forging new um, connecting points with others new locations new new lots of stuff and we'll talk more about it when we get there but um right now what if i were anyone here i would take how i would use this retrograde cycle i'm getting chills okay hopefully not rambling too much because i'm just again it's a stream of consciousness um we at this point in time August, September, 2021, we have to start getting keenly aware of what has worked out well for us before, about where we have had success before, about what has gone well, about um, what we need to take with us into these higher, way, way super purpose-oriented endeavors or objectives, goals. And um, we have to be able to apply those things to some type of like greater purpose and let it all come together as this sort of like I don't want to say it's not so much identity as it is truth or as it is purposeful expression. Okay, purposeful expression. Uh, and that is being generated here and now uh, based on what we're reaching back for right now and how we start to move with those things in hand. So um, definitely one of the greatest times this has been happening since the beginning of July, actually, um, to know like what you're good at, like what has worked well for you? What has, uh, what are you like known for? What is, what is your, what is you? Okay. And uh, prepare for that to probably absolutely create a huge series of elevation over the oncoming few months. And uh, during this retrograde time, it's still fine to meditate on this journal about it. Who do I want to be? What has worked well for me before? What have been the happiest moments thus far? What have been my favorite people that I've had in my life? 
what has been my favorite like uh, material of clothing to wear, what has um, been the most enjoyable, also food, like what foods do I feel that I've been eating constantly during a time of health? Like it's really actually mundane stuff like that. Like what is my favorite food? What have, what food has made me healthiest? What types of people have made me healthiest? What sleeping circadian rhythms have done me the best? What skincare products, hairstyles have um, led me to feel happiest in my expression? Like all of these like core building stuff is important now. So yes, exercise conditioning, core building is paramount for a lot of people because I feel that with... Um, a very like soft or undeveloped core strength. And I'm like right there with y'all. Like I, I have not been doing as much core, core work as I should, um, but I'm getting to it. Um, that basically leads us to not, or, or to just really struggle through it. Like, God, I just can't handle these experiences I'm going through. Like there's a softness about the uh, ego as well as the core is, if the core is undeveloped right now. And I'm not saying to like go crazy. I'm not saying to like, exercise to no end, but any type of core strengthening, um, whether this is the core of the body or also whether this is the core of the identity. Okay. To me, these things right now feel soft and undeveloped to some degree. And if you've already made progress there, congratulations, that will really, really benefit you in the months to come. But here is still a point. Okay. Here's still a point to really start developing these things and to start to really embody Okay, so that we have the spiritual and also um, energetic capacity to really do our purposes work in the oncoming year. So um, thank you so much, everyone. We are preparing for the oncoming year at this point in time. And for a lot of us, it takes a lot of core development, um, like starting right this second. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll conclude on a sort of um, light humorous fun note okay we'll have a fun little light moment here because i know a lot of these videos like these retrograde videos are always like whoa that's intense stuff as retrogrades are indeed intense astrologically um it's very nice to not be upset with who you once were at this point in time to venerate the past, to venerate the humor, the difficulty, the sadness, the happiness, the uh, truth of the previous experiences is very healing and almost at a level of ritual at this point in time. Um, and preparing to, by the end of the year, to perhaps step into a very new version of oneself and to um, accept a humorous and loving life instead of a like tragic and turmoil-ridden life is uh, totally, totally within the structural energetic uh ease not even just possibility but ease so choosing okay choices 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 choosing a nice life okay choosing health choosing a developed core choosing um choosing right uh choosing in a way that is in alignment with one's higher being and laughing through the process maybe i don't know it's, it's almost like it's got a really the, the energetic vibrations have to really start panning up a little bit and getting more humor oriented or more um, calm and tranquil at least. Uh, but laughter and humor really is so healing. So if you can have that, that's really great. And anyway, everyone, I'm going to leave you on this note. I really enjoyed coming on and talking about these retrogrades. If you get the chance to uh, subscribe to the channel, if you're new, I would so appreciate it. Be sure to turn on those bell notifications and comment below and let me know uh, how these retrogrades are going for you. Did the video resonate? Are you seeing this timeline between now and February 2022? Let me know below. And of course, all of your likes uh, really help and share the video as well. Uh, all of those buttons are below here on YouTube. And I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous day, month, um, experience. So talk to you all soon. Have a great, great August. Bye.